Welcome to TapSwipeClick.com. This week, we talk with a designer that I've been working with for a number of years at IBM. She gets into her early influences, where she got started, and even how her upbringing has affected her as a designer. Please welcome Missy Yarbrough. Cool. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Missy, welcome. How are you? I'm dandy. How okay. about yourself? I'm good. Thank you for taking your lunch um, hour or half hour <laughs> to do this. Um, I'll try to get through this. If we need a part two, that's totally okay. Um, but yeah. So let's, let's just get started. Tell me, like, how, how did you happen? Well, that's an Tell interesting... Tell me about your upbringing. <laughs> that's such a fabulous way of phrasing. How did you happen? It's not, it's not a good phrasing. <laughs> Tell me about your upbringing. <laughs> you stop laughing first and I'll tell you about my upbringing. Okay. Go. Okay. Um, so I'm Missy Yarbrough and I'm from Mississippi. Woo! Big surprise. Um, born and raised in the Mississippi Delta where there's a cluster of Chinese um, Asian American community living in the Delta region. And um, was born in 1990 and all my life uh, for the most part grew up in a pretty humble background where my mom and dad uh, immigrated here from the Philippines and they started a mom and pop uh, grocery shop and there they sold a lot of um, neighborhood needs uh, to the locals and yeah I got a quick introduction to customer service at a young age mm. what what like what? <laughs> like what? <laughs> or how old? Or, and what did you do? Or what did you learn? Well, if you must, must really know, um, I started working the store probably around the time I was eight because that's when I apparently learned how to count. And as soon as I learned how to count was when, well, I was issued to be helped, uh, a helper in the counter because, well, I could issue change and count money and add stuff and subtract stuff and before I knew it I knew what 8% tax was to mostly everything oh I'm sorry I'm I'm re referencing Texan state tax so uh, Mississippi state tax is 7% okay. so yeah slightly better slightly better <laughs> okay in all the weird ways mm -hmm. mm. yeah so that that's kind of how you grew up and you were you went to high school there in Mississippi, right? Yep. And um, you went to school at Mississippi State. Like, what was that path from your upbringing to, to eventually design? That's a great question. Yeah. So, because of the environment in which I was around in, I wasn't permitted to go outside much. Um, crime was really prevalent in my neighborhood. It's not really a safe place. I go home and I hear stories of assault and murder being fairly commonplace. So at this point, I feel like I've been pretty desensitized to some of it. Um, but I was struggling to really connect with people um, because I was in this mental space of where I had a lot of... Um, anger about like why am I being kept in this place in the store being worked so early mm -hmm. um, and I found that I felt purposeless and I wanted to help I didn't know how to help because I mean I was pretty much locked away from the rest of the world um, and thankfully um, I was encouraged to go to the library and read a bunch of books and so I did. I read a lot of books in my elementary school days. Um, so this was like the late 90s or whatnot. But man, once the early 2000s hit, my family got a computer. And man, it changed my life because I got to explore so many different things um, through the internet. Um, Google was like my best friend. Like. I could ask a question and Google gave me answers and I was like, that's so cool. Um, and then some way around that little adventure of like connecting my interest with cartoons, I found online communities, um, namely around the Cartoon Network Orbit space, which was awesome to me, even though I didn't have Cartoon Network at the time. Um, 
but there was another community that I grew attached to, and that was like the Neopets community. And back then, like Neopets was a very open space for a youngster to um, pretty much take care of virtual pets. I mean, mm. I couldn't have a pet in real life. Like the old Tamagotchis, but virtually online and all that stuff? Yep. Wow. Yeah. And you could feed them or just ignore them? Yeah, you, you could feed them or just ignore them like I have been for the past 15 years, apparently, and the <laughs> status is still dying. Uh, that's a sad inside joke for those of y'all who have connected on Neopets. It is what it is. still around them? And you could give them time or love and, or not? I mean, you can feed them, right. but your Neopets never die. They, oh, okay. you can, they just keep dying. Yeah, they're just eternally in the dying state. That's so sad. Yes, it is. Um, I don't think they really thought about the longevity mm -hmm. of the Neopets community, but mm -hmm. um, I mean, at the time it was run by like uh, Doug and uh, I forgot the Donna. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, before they sold it off to uh, Viacom, which then I believe got acquired by Nickelodeon. Yeah. Or maybe Viacom is a parent company of Nickelodeon. Either mm -hmm. way. Um, I digress. Neopets uh, also had a very specific feature, um, and that feature was to allow users to edit um, profiles and customize it through HTML and CSS. And that began our foray into just digital like design mm -hmm. altogether. Mm -hmm. um, I went onto one of the forums and I saw someone had this spectacular signature and I was like I want to learn how to do that can you can you teach me mm -hmm. and uh, she was super open she was more than happy to share some of her knowledge and then before I knew it I had dove into the world of Photoshop wow so let me back up a little bit your parents get a new computer at, at 2000 2001-ish yeah. right and you discovered online stuff Neopets and then somehow did they buy Photoshop for you? Did you acquire it? Did it show up? I'm like, I, at first I thought you were using whatever stock on the computer at the time. Yeah. But then I guess Photoshop's easy to kind of get. Um, and that, All I mean, right. Just to be honest, that's what happens, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. If, you, if you want me to be candid and frank here, I will explain. My sister, mm -hmm. uh, she's 12 years my senior, mm -hmm. and she went to um, college in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And there, well, piracy was abundant. I'm assuming it still is. I think it's a cultural norm. It probably yeah. is. But either way, she pirated, oh, <clears throat> she purchased a lot of pirated goods, yeah. including yeah. Photoshop. Uh, she saw that I had um, nurtured an interest in design, so nice. she was like, I want to help you um, get to that point because she felt, um, she felt compelled to since she knew where my situation was, where I'm just mm. stuck in a, in the store in the middle mm. of the Mississippi Delta with not really much else to do other than count money. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So was she okay? She was going in the Philippines. She was going to school and all that stuff, and she got that that stuff for you. That stuff. <laughs> Sorry, it's like the thing that I people feel like have I forgotten. Just a crime. You, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll go with you. Like I did the same thing. Yeah. Like people gave me Photoshop, and it was illegal. But it's like that's how I learned. Yeah. You know. And I found tutorials and all that stuff, and other people taught me. Um, okay, so back on track. Someone taught you how to make that um, graphic or a signature and whatnot. And, and what happened after that? What happened after that was that, um, coincidentally, around the same time, I believe I was in eighth grade or whatnot, uh, I got an, invited out to participate in an honor summer camp called the um, Joseph Baldwin program mm. and it's hosted by the Truman State University super great program um, I don't think it was like too crazy costly for what it was um, and essentially the Truman State University hosted like their college professors uh, to teach certain classes so you can learn guitar, you can learn about politics, you can learn about um, science. And they had like a plethora, maybe like, I don't know, 15 different courses. Because mm -hmm. I think there was like about 400 kids participating in this nationwide. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, one of the courses happened to be an intro de uh, course to design. Mm. And that's when I really got into the nitty gritty mm. of it, of uh, exploring it with my peers. Uh, Photoshop, wow, book I believe was was the book of the book of the year. I actually found a copy of that book at my uncle's um, house, so that was Didn't funny how back. prevalent. <laughs> yeah. Did you bring it back or no? Oh, he, no. he happened to also be learning Photoshop around the same time. Nice. So it was a thing. It, 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 I suppose it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, but after that one month oh, summer program, I pretty much took. Um, that experience and then kept mm -hmm. hunting for information any tutorial any um, exercises I could do anything I could practice mm -hmm. um, I had a pretty daily habit about this um, I knew that at the end of the day I wasn't that great I wasn't good at all mm -hmm. um, but I knew that the only way for me to get better was to just dive into it and practice and the way I practiced was that I had an open thread to online communities where people could come in and request custom graphics. And through that, like I produced hundreds of customized form signatures for people. And it ranged anywhere from like anime to video games to like real life people. And it was pretty awesome getting to practice like uh, extraction techniques to color correction to. Mm -hmm. um, quality improvement um, mm. because sometimes like you would get really poor quality images to work with and you have to like repair those images before you can actually do something with mm. them um, and then uh, it was a great way for me to practice typography because of the variety of requests I received and ultimately um, before I knew it at the end of my high school career like I had like a whole compilation of hundreds of signatures that I was proud to have said that I've made them at you know during that time mm. and yeah I thought maybe once I entered college I would do something with computers or maybe art but mm -hmm. I was also being pressured um, to take a high paying mm, major mm -hmm. essentially for example engineering law right. medical mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I, I do want to dig into that a little bit. I think something that's really interesting about your background is like you're from Mississippi. You have an Asian background, right? Um, most of my friends with Asian backgrounds and even in design, it's like East Coast, West Coast. So like, um, can you talk about some of that being there and how that may have influenced you or... Mm. As far as being a Southern Asian? Yeah. Well, different. <laughs> I did have a severe identity conflict because mm -hmm. I struggled uh, for a long while with upholding the traditional values of an you know, Asian family and for my, mm -hmm. and it's like a Chinese background. Um, but the thing is, is I feel like as much as my parents may have wished for it to happen, I am a product of my environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was constantly surrounded by what's the Deep South's history mm -hmm. um, in the turmoil of racial tension. It's very much alive and time seems in its own way stopped, um, kind of frozen. I go back to Mississippi and it's weird because, well, it's rescinding back into history in a way mm -hmm. um but on that other note um there was a part of me that felt compelled to embrace my uh, american spirit mm -hmm. in a way and just um find value in the work i do and forge my own path essentially even through the hardships i would face mm -hmm. um it resulted in a lot of mm, Turmoils, to, to say mm -hmm. the least, mm -hmm. uh, because I did have back and forth conflict about my choices later, mm -hmm. especially with design. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I first entered college, I was originally a um, computer science major. 
But after the first semester, because I was in the honors program, I quickly realized I would be outperformed by my peers mm -hmm. in the industry level because I was getting so schooled mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. on like just an introductory level. Mm -hmm. And I understood why, why that was. Mm -hmm. And like within the honors class specifically, the peers that enjoyed doing their work, yeah. they enjoyed doing the lessons and they did extra. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they were helping other people. Mm -hmm. I knew right then and there, those were the people I was going to have to compete in the right. industry. And you're just trying to catch up. Yes, yeah. I was doing catch up. Mm -hmm. On top of that, uh, realizing that my forte, as even though academically I'd historically done pretty well, right. I was having to like learn a whole different aspect of what language was mm -hmm. from a technical aspect. Mm -hmm. um, because I know that there's language from like a foreign language, cultural aspect, but coming right. at language from a technical foundation was completely different. Yeah. And um, yeah. I understood a lot of the concepts, um, but I did do well at execution. Mm -hmm. And that was a very humbling lesson to me. And ultimately like, came to the point where instead of doing work f towards computer science, I wound up diving into Photoshop for therapy. Mm -hmm. um, I would wake up early and just like pretty much churn, um, bang out a design for a website for someone. Yeah. And <laughs> one of my friends like suggested to me as like a fleeting thought, I was like, so why are you doing computer science? <laughs> if you're waking up at 7 o'clock in the morning to go into Photoshop, I don't understand. Like, why? Right. And I'm like, that's a very excellent point. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go walk to the registrar's office and change my major. Mm -hmm. And I did just that. And I did not consult my family. Mm -hmm. And uh, once I told them what was up, oh, I got a lot of um, flack for it an immense amount of um, negative support around that decision. And my argument was, that's, I understand that y'all have a lot of anxieties about this, uh, but I have a firm belief that life is not set in a linear path. Life is going to throw all sorts of obstacles at you and you're never going to know like what they may be because mm -hmm. that's just the nature of how life is. Um, and to my family, I told them, if you have so much belief in me in computer science, then I should be able to apply that intellect to that in my new major, which was art. Right. You, you, you didn't do a graphic design, you did art? Or graphic design is under art, I think. It is graphic design under art. Okay. Um, so because of the selection of my mm -hmm. college's program, mm -hmm. um, it's structured so I technically have a... BFA with mm -hmm. a concentration in graphic design. Okay. So I had to start into an undergraduate program of like general art things. Here's all your foundationals. You have to do um, a survey of ceramics. You got to do mm -hmm. a survey of uh, 3D um, sculpting, right. drawing, mm -hmm. painting. All of it. Five. Yeah. <laughs> everything. <laughs> and then you can apply right. to be. Yeah accepted into the graphic design mm -hmm. program did you have like a portfolio to apply with all that sort of stuff or? your portfolio would, mm -hmm. would be built from the um, okay. survey courses okay. essentially and that was a very interesting time because mm -hmm. i realized in 2020 is hindsight mm -hmm. um i realize now that the way i approached the portfolio process was vastly different from how my peers were okay. tackling it on um, so, with the portfolio process, uh, I made close um, acquaintanceships with some of my uh, colleagues, and I, we all realized that we each had our different strengths mm -hmm. as far as like, you're really good at cutting mats, you're really good at like measuring things, you're really good at selection, let's all collaborate. Okay. And so we pretty much had like a two week like session of like where we came over, gathered together, put mm -hmm. all of our stuff out, had honest critiques. Right. And then if nice. something needed to be improved, like we went off and did that. And then we would come back together nice. and like 
pretty much assign that person mm-hmm. like you're really good at cutting mats go cut mats <laughs> and like we worked on our portfolios together mm-hmm. and we like made it into the program together nice did everyone in that group get into the program mm-hmm. okay. and uh, actually one of our members like made like the top status within the pro- program like wow. as far as like the admittance rankings nice no, i don't know how the rankings are done but apparently right. they re- they really care about it's millimeters like, i like this person <laughs> maybe right yeah. but I, I i've heard that story before um i think when i interviewed lena mm. she said like f- when we were finishing portfolio i found other people that could help push me up and, and support me going through versus going by myself and someone else in my other class did the same thing mm-hmm. um yeah, so it seemed helpful, I guess, right? Yeah. All right, so you go through your graphic design program. Um, well, what was the focus for that program? The yeah. focus for that program was that it was a print-based um, mm-hmm. undergraduate program, so most of my concentration was learning to um, present tangible products. Mm-hmm. So anything from magazines and brochures to posters, um, Packaging. Yeah, packaging, mm. branding, uh, advertising. And honestly, I look back in hindsight, I was like, this is a lot of glue. <laughs> this is a lot of like reprinting things. And it was like, if I messed up on, I don't know, one tiny aspect of the print, like I would have to reprint a whole paper for it. Like not just like copied paper, like cheap paper. It's yeah. like, here's the whole two dollar french paper wow like yeah so like spelling <sighs> colors off alignment all that good stuff yeah, yeah. i mean it's a very humbling experience mm-hmm. and while i do appreciate that it also made me just very frustrated at the amount of waste i produced per each project yeah and yeah. by the end of my undergraduate program i was just yearning to go back into mm-hmm. um something more digital based where you started right for mm-hmm. the show so you, okay, you go through the program and somehow you apply to IBM. Oh, <laughs> I've been wondering how that happened. I yeah. still wonder sometimes. Um, so in my last semester at college, I walked into one of my professor's um, office. I would never had a class from her, but at this point I wasn't getting the critique I wanted. Um, and I wanted helpful, constructive criticism. Uh, that was fairly detailed and insightful and my current class like it just wasn't doing it for me so I went to her office just on a limb and she had just returned from a conference and her demeanor was very different in that she was just elated (laughs) to be back and to tell everyone Mm -hmm. about the gospel of IBM design and I was just like you're like no she's different yeah, like she was like <laughs> riveted, happy. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, professors, I feel for y'all because like y'all have to like deal with classes all the time and mm-hmm. then your administrative mm-hmm. work and then your own personal projects to like still be a professor. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a lot of work. So I understand like, you know, most of the time you're kind of like lukewarm on the emotive mm-hmm. side. But this day <laughs> she was just, whoo, firecrack- like firecrackers everywhere. Right. And she told me uh, and shared with me her story of what she learned about the IBM Design Initiative mm-hmm. at the conference. And at this time, it was like September. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I'll think about I'll look, it. Yeah, I'll look into that, whatever. <laughs> I didn't really think too much of it. Right. Um, and then there came the point of where uh, the end of the year portfolio show happened. Mm-hmm. And then there's a time between your portfolio show, or at least in my case, this time before the portfolio show and graduation happened. Yeah. And it's just dead silence of nothing mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. And that silence like ate at me because yeah. I was like, yeah. I don't have a job lined up. Are you are you supposed <laughs> to like you have your portfolio show internal, I guess at Mississippi State, right? And mm-hmm. then you're supposed to apply for stuff and Yeah. Okay, that's that's all you're given. That's that's your big focus, right? Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. Although like I'd been looking for jobs mm-hmm. for like at least six seven months yeah um prepping myself of what's changed within the industry mm-hmm. because i know when i looked for jobs back in middle school yes i was oh my god yeah you wait you were looking for like industry jobs in middle school versus like working well i was doing job. research okay so i wasn't i, I did <laughs> not actively apply for jobs while right. in middle school i knew oh, i would be rejected because of you know yeah. age and everything 
But, I mean, I wanted to at least understand what are the qualifications um, for the ongoing jobs in the industry because mm -hmm. I knew that tooling would change over time. And wow. that with technology, like, it's going to phase out. So, um, yeah, now that I think about it, I have some that's, sort of... That's pretty good. <laughs> that's a, I didn't that's, pick up on Flash. No, <laughs> no one saw that coming. No, we did. <laughs> right. I, I was know. like, oh, this is great, but man, this is a lot more work than Photoshop. It is. I don't it know is. how this is going to be sustainable. Yeah, yeah, I think that's why. People are like, ah, we can't build something yeah. like this anymore or whatever. I give up. <laughs> yeah, I have a friend, he, when he was um, still in design, he did uh, whole sites for clients in Japan. Mm -hmm. And he showed me this one where uh, every page that it loaded on had this ridiculous animation. And so, <laughs> and it, like it was before I was doing design full time, and I yeah. was like, I was like, why would your client need that? Or any, you know, I just started asking those questions. Like, I can't believe that guy asked for that. And then like primed me for like when you start making decisions for mm -hmm. things. So anyway, that was flash related. Yeah. All right. So, uh, teacher comes back, end of the the last semester in your senior year, you're applying, dead silence. And then I started a job, a, like actual sending out job applications. Okay. And I knew that I would send them out in waves. So waves of like 10 to 12. Right. And I picked specifically the ones in which I felt comfortable addressing the responsibilities and mm -hmm. roles and the company initiative. And the reason why I highlight that in particular is because during my internship search, mm -hmm. I had an interview set up. And then I walked into the location, and as soon as I stepped inside the location, my mental state went from, oh, I need an internship, to no, I do not want an internship here. Mm. And then I proceeded mm. to purposely sabotage my interview. Um, I think I've done that. Yeah, <laughs> because there comes a point where it's like, you get to decide your time, yeah. your actions, mm -hmm. and dictating what value do you see this experience mm -hmm will provide you later. And for that specific location, I did not see myself getting much value out of um, that company. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it something triggered inside me. I was just like, I can't. I'm going to do this interview because I've already committed. Yeah. But like, I know I, I know that I was not going to get it. Oh yeah. So that being said, like going back to um, end of college one of the applicants, I mean, applications I sent out mm -hmm. was IBM. Uh, they had a lot of listings on Indeed. And oh, yeah. I replied to a listing that was specifically uh, addressing the needs of being accountable for multiple images in a repository. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I do that on a daily basis. That sounds what, what was the title? Visual Designer. Okay. Yeah. And then you're responsible for visuals in a repository. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so okay. those assets. And then, like, mm -hmm. it was asking for how many years have you worked in some sort of graphics editing software? And I was like, this is a really weird way of asking. Mm -hmm. Your experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, it was just a strange application. Um, and it was just this basic form. It wasn't, like, 20 pages long, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. I stopped applying to Disney because their application process was... The UX was terrible. Okay. Um, like if someone's like dream job, but I would like stop them because I, yeah. I know the forms. I I've seen their their application. Yeah, process. I don't know yeah. if it's updated since then, mm -hmm. but I remember at the time I was like, you know, mm -hmm. Disney is nice and all, but I think this right here is just the uh, the hazing part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But either way, um, yeah, I shot off an email and I didn't think anything about it. Um, as far as like the application goes and um, a couple of days later I get I receive an email at 11 p.m. at night from someone at IBM and then I was like is this a hoax <laughs> at this time I had right. no idea of like people work jobs that weren't nine to five mm -hmm. because in Mississippi like that's virtually how your day goes right. uh, most things are closed by like eight or nine sometimes you might get lucky and they close at ten and then if it's like a special weekend later, but mm -hmm. I mean, things go really slow in Mississippi. And the idea of receiving an email at 11 p.m., I was just really sketchy about yeah. it. But no, it turned out to be super legit. Mm -hmm. um, 
Sarah Plantenberg was the manager that was interested in me, and we set up a phone interview the day after New Year's. <laughs> Let me tell you, that leads for some great anxiety levels right. over the Christmas and New Year season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I prepped for it as best as I could. I think most of it was just me just not like mm -hmm. going into a panic anxiety. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, into a ball of just nothingness. <laughs> but that was that was dispelled pretty quickly, thankfully. Right. And the reason why is because as soon as um, I got on the phone line, um, Sarah's cat and her colleague Denise's bird greeted me instead. And I was like confused because I was like, that wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> and overall, the nature of the first um, phone interview mm -hmm. was very relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I felt like I was talking to um, just a good friend or right. a good colleague. Mm -hmm. And we actually went over Nice. the uh, one hour allotment which in hindsight i realized wow that's a lot of time in mm -hmm. ibm time <laughs> it is yeah 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 for managers and all that mm -hmm. yeah because their calendars are super slammed mm -hmm. so i feel really um thrilled that sh they wanted to talk to me for that long yeah and then they were on was it january 2nd yeah the hangover on, day yeah, yeah it was hangover day that is right <laughs> i didn't think about that too good point right yeah. and yeah, and then they immediately like um, scheduled me for a second interview, and at the tail end of the first interview, they left an optional challenge okay. um, to design redesign one of their products. That was the open-ended statement I received, and then I was like, okay, that sounds yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. And I got off the phone, and then once I got off the phone, I realized I have no idea what IBM products look like. <laughs> I contacted Denise and she sent me a lot of resources for me to work off mm -hmm. of. But um, yeah, I took a first stab at it and uh, I realized that IBM was going towards flat design mm -hmm. and away from skeuomorphism. Mm -hmm. So that was like really good because skeuomorphism, in my opinion, was like so timely. Yeah. <laughs> like, I appreciate the art. It's just a lot of time mm -hmm. um, and practice that goes into that field of uh, well focus. And yeah, pretty much... Uh, iterated and presented my own design mm -hmm. um, proposal of the changes that should be made that because of the information that was on the page right. and yeah my second interview um, was pretty successful I'd say and then they told me that they would contact me in a couple of days mm -hmm. they called me the next day nice. and offered me and I wow. was like my life is going to change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, my first foray out of college was IBM, mm -hmm. and it's crazy uh, some days where I think about it, it's like a uh, kid from Mississippi mm -hmm. that just wanted to like leave Mississippi mm -hmm. is actually like leaving, leaving Mississippi, yeah. and it was great, uh, but I also knew when I would start at IBM that I would have a lot to like catch up on, mm -hmm. because there are like differences between country life and city yeah. life, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like going from Mississippi to like you call Austin the city, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, there are options too, like going to San Jose or Atlanta. Is that right? Or... Uh, San Jose and Raleigh. That's right. Oh, I Raleigh. Think. Okay. Uh, so the offer at the time was that I would be offered a position on the design team, which was a remote base. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah was technically in San Jose. Denise was in Austin. Mm -hmm. Um, my design leads in, uh, in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had a couple of uh, design colleagues that were based in Raleigh. Okay. But my developers would be working in, du in Ireland and Italy. It was... I think that's like... Yeah, it's, I think how a lot of teams were run mm -hmm. back in the day, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so your, your first... I want to say your first year, right? Mm -hmm. Were you mostly remote? My first year was mostly remote, mm -hmm. and um, the practices that we uh, were in, using were it was basically like the tail end of waterfall. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely felt the silos, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, especially as a junior visual designer, right. technically. Were there um, other designers? You had other designers. You had a lead in Atlanta, right? I had a lead, yeah. and um, I also had um, a UX designer I was working with for the product. Okay. Um, so within that time it was uh, the cloud and smarter infrastructure team mm. and 
that was the result of the old Tivoli products. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm starting to use and a lot. Yeah, yeah. I might need to get a picture of your first computer too. Oh, um, really? Are you with it afterwards? And we'll put it up and show everybody. Because okay. like everyone here, we're all on Macs and that's an, you know, it's more or less industry standard, but your first computer was not. <laughs> I think it was a compact. I don't know if I still have it. I think you do. It's in the bag next to your, t- your desk. Oh, you're talking about my la- my work laptop. Your first laptop. I already yeah. returned that. Yeah. I finally returned oh, that. Oh, damn it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Right. I mean. All right. Yeah, but I have a picture somewhere. I think I took a picture of it. But what was I it? I mean, I have a picture of it. It was a ThinkPad. I had a docking station. Mm-hmm. So when I got to IBM on my first day, between all the sales, engineering, and marketing people, mm-hmm. they had like this one box. I had two boxes, and yeah. they were like, "What?" Yeah. And I was like, "I don't know why. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is what just what I have." Mm-hmm. And it was like a ten inch screen. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It was something like out of I don't know what, and then you had to design with it. So. Yeah, I mean, I had to design with it, but again, like I I came from Mississippi, y'all, and uh, realize now my standards were <laughs> nowhere near. The average expectations. Right, right. Uh, I was definitely used to like um, making do with what you had, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, yeah. that attitude has definitely like helped me mm-hmm. like I guess get into IBM. But then realizing, oh, I don't have to like stick with what I'm used to. I can ask for stuff, mm-hmm, and like that mm-hmm. ad in itself, like asking for things, right. was like a huge challenge in itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's a good point. Um, we're kind of at the top of the hour. There's a lot that I want to get into. I mean, like your, okay. your initial story is like really awesome, <laughs> right? <laughs> how you got here, but you, how long have you been in IBM for so far? Four years as Four of years. Friday. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I know. I'm sorry. And we did not have a party for you. We should have a party for you. It's fine. Okay. I mean, we had a cutting ham. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had a cookie cake last Friday. Yes. Um, for a, a lot of people, let's say at this juncture, where we stopped in this interview, I, I asked you them for some like points, maybe one or two things you would give to someone that is applying or looking for jobs. Like, what is something that you would uh, tell someone who's just starting to search um, that helped you? In the start of your search, mm-hmm. be purposeful in what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Because while it's easy to look for everything, it's also very easy to look for like opportunities you may not necessarily be excited for. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard to like work creatively when you're not necessarily at a place that you feel passionate about. Um, so be selective. Uh, but that being said, don't talk yourself out of the um, positions that seem out of reach for you mm-hmm. because I feel like with introspection, we sometimes lie to ourselves about what we're truly capable of and Mm -hmm. that we don't actually appreciate ourselves for the skills we're able to bring to a team or to a company. Mm -hmm. And you should just go for that, that top tier, like job that you want to go for. Mm -hmm. You never know. Um, I mean, if you've been working at it, at your portfolio and all your pieces on all your works and you have the confidence that, you know, as a company on the other side, would find value in you, I, yeah, just go forth and go for it. What's the, what is the harm of receiving a no yeah. versus never had known what their answer was yeah. in the first place? Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, that, yeah, be thoughtful of it, but for, I, I totally agree. Just like go for it. That was some of the advice I got early on. Like even though it says senior or 45 years experience, ignore that. They're just really looking to see if, their team fit, culture fit, is this someone I want to work with and train and so on. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Missy, thank you very much. Yay! Ah! <laughs> All right. Back to lunch. <laughs> or some form of it. Or some form of it. Thanks, Missy. Now we're recording.